All righty. Hello, welcome to Paul's Take, and this is my take on aliens. Alien encounter. Are we ready? Dom, dom, dom. So I'm not talking about spiritually, are we ready? Are we like mentally ready for meeting aliens? Because uh, I think that's what, when people think about, we're not being ready for aliens, or we're not ready. It's like we have not risen to a certain enlightenment stage in our lives. Or as a society. Well, that might be true too, but there's other issues as well. That is about enlightenment or world peace or one world government, which I think also is a big determining factor for the aliens to come to Earth. But I mean, they're already here, but they're not like, they're not known, they're not open, they're not, the, the mothership has not landed yet. Mm. So what I'm talking about is, do you ever, first of all, let's go back. Do you ever play the game, the board game Risk? I used to love playing this when I was a kid. If you don't know what Risk is, basically it's a board game. Now, now of course, you can play it online or download an app or something. But the idea is, okay, so you have a world map, right? And each country is, you can see the borders of each country. And, and this was actually developed, by understanding, was it was developed by the Navy. So that way they can practice um, global domination. Yes, I think it was, yeah. Because it's, it's called a risk, global, global domination. And the idea was to take over the world. And you basically, you roll the dice in the beginning, and then you get all these different, well, no, let's see here it goes. It's been a while since I played, but you take turns picking your countries, right? And then when you roll the dice, I think you get the amount of troops, basically, as the dice shows. <clears throat> So then once you set the board up, you, get, so you roll the dice, you put your troops down, you roll the dice, you get your troops, and you build the troops. You can spread them any way you want on the, on, the, on the map. You can spread them evenly across the countries, but that wouldn't be the, that's not the smart way to play. You really want your forces on the borders, right? And then also, what I my strategy was, was I would try to pick a place like... I believe it was like Australia because Australia was down below and you had to come across um, like Asia to get to it. In the game, you can do that. But if I had like Australia, it didn't have a lot of points, but you can gather, you can make a really strong border. There's only one way in and one way out. It's also like South America and North America, but they have multiple ways in. But Australia only had one way in. That's, that, was, that was ideal. So you have a really strong border, and then you just waited. You waited, you waited out, and you keep building your army. Each, each time you play, if you don't go into battle, because when you battle, you can lose people. That's when you basically try to take over another property, another country. And the, so the, the idea is if you have more people against a smaller p uh, group, you're going to win. But in doing so, you're going to kill a lot of your people right? And that makes your army weaker. So the, my strategy was nobody really wanted Australia because it didn't have a lot of power. But it was a, it was a place people left you alone. If you're playing with more than one people, you let the other countries just start wiping each other out while you sit there in Australia, minding your own business. One border, you keep building your army in Australia. And then when the rest of the world battles and gets weak, then when your army is huge, then you strike. You don't strike early when you're weak because then you'll just wipe yourself out. You wait. So I think we're in the same situation with the aliens. We don't know who the aliens are, right? They could be really nice people or aliens 
or they can be hostile, right? But one thing we know for sure is that if they have the technology to get to us, then they're going to have, they're going to be far more superior um, technology-wise than we are. We are going to be the dumb race, right? So my thing is this. We don't put ourselves, we don't make ourselves known. Don't advertise we're here. Got to keep it on a down low. Be Australia. Stay here. Stop sending out signals. And start nuking things, making noise. Being a, a loud neighbor. Don't know, be like, hey, who's that, that loud planet over there? Let's go see what's up, what's up with them. And then they realize, hey, we got they got a really nice planet there. They got all this, all these people that are primitive, all these primitive people that can worship us and we can use for cheap labor. And we could just or take them out and steal their planet altogether. So what we need to do is we need to stay on the down low until we build up our technology. We build up, now we're not trying to like, I wouldn't say we should try to take over other planets, but until we have the technology to go to them and have the technology to be able to defend ourselves against their technology, then we shouldn't be announcing ourselves. We should be keeping ourselves on the down low. Now, granted, it seems like to me, if you're into UFO um, conspiracies and stuff, supposedly we made contact already. And apparently we made contact with more than one species, supposedly. Is it true or not? I don't know. I think so. So maybe these are not the ones we need to worry about. But eventually, there's going to be some crazy powerful Darth Vader with the, what do they call it? The Darth Vader has the, there's the Empire, the Empire. There's got to be some huge multi-planet empire out there in the Milky Way. There is billions among billions of stars. There's going to be some very powerful alien life out there. And they're probably not all kumbaya. And really, it seems like to me, if you're going all out conspiracy theory, that probably some alien came over here in the jump started our intelligent life, right? At one point, we were apes, and now we're humans making planes and jets and nuclear weapons and stuff. Well, that might have been some intervention from some aliens, right? Possibly. I think so. Well, what was their goal behind that? I mean, if they instructed us, they gave us, let's just say religion, and they told us, don't seek knowledge. Just listen to the Bible and stay primitive. Don't seek knowledge. Just be kumbaya. Be just there and be dumb. But we didn't. We finally broke away from that and started using our brains and started figuring things out. And now we are all pretty much far more advanced than we've been in a long time or ever. Well, maybe not ever, but as far as we know, there could have been some some way back humans with technology that was got wiped out or something, destroyed themselves. Who knows? But anyways, we're, we're pretty advanced now. Probably still primitive compared to alien life, especially if they're able to come here. Um, that means they're pretty advanced. So, yeah, if we're, if we're meeting up with some other nice aliens, we might try to yeah learn as much as we can about defending ourselves and finding out as much as we can about other life out there and what are they in their intentions. And I'm sure they're doing this. I'm sure they're not releasing this to us because we would lose our minds, right? Could you imagine if say there was three nice alien races that were talking to the president or talking to the CIA or whoever is in charge, the uh, shadow government. And they were disclosing all the information in the universe they were telling us about all the 
the good aliens out there and all the ones that are not. All the ones that could potentially want to will find us and want to make make us their slaves, which is very possible. I think that potentially whoever sparked our intelligent life probably did so so they can come back at some point and use us for whatever they had planned to. Now, some believe it was to mine gold. Apparently gold is this universal important element and we had a bunch. Now it seems like we might have mined it all and gave it all away already because apparently the uh, Fort Knox, ladies and gentlemen, Fort Knox is empty. Supposedly. I heard it was empty for two different reasons. One, a mysterious empty where we don't know where it went, aliens. Or two, that it went back to, hmm, who do we pay off? Apparently back in the 50s, 60s, 40s, I don't know, 30s. I don't know, at some point. We had to pay back our debt to somebody. Might have been the, maybe it was England. Could have been, could have been England. Um, we had to pay back a debt, a really huge debt. So we gave them all our gold, supposedly. Um, so anyways, gold is very valuable. And we have none. And I wonder if anybody has any. Because you don't really, I mean, it's, yeah, you still buy gold, but you don't see it like back earlier when the Mr. T days when everybody had a bunch of, excuse me, a bunch of bling everywhere. Is the gold gone? Is it? I don't know. I think maybe a lot of it is gone. Maybe it was replaced with fake gold. Who knows? Conspiracy. I'm sure there's still some left. They got to portray the fact that, they got to portray that we have some. They got to hide the fact it's all gone, right? So, anyhow, the ones that create us are going to come back at some point. It's like, here's how I see it. If we had an eye, if we had our eye on a planet, right? See, there's this nice planet somewhere that's very um, hospitable to us. Had the same kind of air. Maybe it's a little bit off, but maybe they got to do some, some uh, what do they call that, terraforming. So they're going to terraform it. At the same time, they're going to need a work crew. Yeah, they can send robots, but robots is expensive. They got a lot of metal. That's a lot, it takes a lot of work. Or they could send these probe type things or like a drone, drone ships that launches way in advance. Maybe they're like, okay, so check this out. Here's what's happening here. We, they find Earth, right? Aliens find Earth way back when. But it takes time for them to travel to Earth as well. So they shoot these probes that can go much faster than they can travel themselves, right? And they get here thousands of years before they're going to arrive. But they send these these little robots, probe things, that sends Earth, or sends people, genes, and they mix it with the, the primates, whatever, or the caveman, to up our genetic... Um, progression and then by the time they get here which it takes them like thousands of years to get here they will have a planet full of people full of a workforce to make sure so when they get here they have their workforce so you probably don't need this many people maybe that's what the population control is all about maybe they only needed what did they say it was 500 million people in the whole world Maybe that's all they can control. Maybe more than that, it's just too much of a drag on their plans. So maybe they, maybe they want us to get rid of billions and billions of people just so they could have enough. But they probably didn't want us. So if they say they sent these DNA to these people or to create people, to create their, work, their workforce, they send them religion. So it says, don't seek knowledge. Knowledge is a devil because they want to keep us dumb. So that when they, we, when they come here, we're not a threat to them, right? We're not a threat. 
because we're dumb. But like I said before, we didn't quite do that. We did progress. We, we did go with technology. We advanced and we advanced this far in a couple hundred years. So could you imagine if we had done all this free thinking 2,000 years ago, we would have been 2,000 years more advanced than us now. So there you have it. Hmm. So it's not like we don't want to meet aliens, right? We do. And we want to get to start traveling around the the, the universe, the galaxy, then the, well, the, yeah, the solar system, then the galaxy. I don't think we'll ever get out of the galaxy. That would be beyond. And there's probably no point in it either. I mean, we have a huge galaxy with billions of stars. It's funny to think that this galaxy that we're living in right now, the Milky Way, has about, oh, I forget, I think the numbers. I think there's about 50 stars to each person on Earth right now. So, like, if we were, like, you know, splitting it out, each of us would have 50 stars. That's pretty crazy. Excuse me. And that's just one galaxy in this massive universe, which billions, even trillions of galaxies Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. I kind of think, I still say, I still say it is easier to create a matrix. It's easier to create the illusion of a, of a world, illusion of a life, than to create life itself. Because if you, like I said, if you think about it, everything that you see hear, feel, touch. It's all in your head. Everything. The whole universe is in your head. So you don't need a universe. You just need a brain. Forget everything else. And everything else is just like a, just, you know, it's just a storyline to make it all work. So, changing the subject there, didn't we? But anyhow, that's what I think. If I had to put my money on what is real, what is not. I kind of want to say my money's on the illusion of a world of a life. I think when we, when we pass away, you will learn that we were just playing a game and experience, having an experience. And then we'll play it again and again and again. For what purpose? Maybe there's a profound purpose or maybe we're just bored in the astro in the afterlife in heaven if you would if you want to call it or just uh, the the other dimension that we live in after we're here maybe it's just a way to pass time if time really exists hmm interesting anyhow if this is your first time listening to the show please by all means if you enjoyed it at all, hit like. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And you can do that little, that little uh, alert. That way you'll know when I'm doing a show. I'm trying to do a show every night at 12.30. I might take the weekends off. This is Sunday night, so I didn't take the night off. But, so I, but, you know, I try to do it every night. But, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. So hit like, subscribe. And I, my, the rest of my shows is on uh it's like on reviews and stuff so if you are listening to this on podcasts this is actually originally a youtube show so you can watch this on youtube live at 12 30 and then on podcast since there is no live feature on podcast you can watch it um afterwards so probably around 1 30 it should be available every night i try to do 30 minutes but I'm not sticking to it that seriously just because I don't want to just drag on, just drag on. So like today, I think I'm going to wrap it up. So thanks again for watching. Tell me what you think in the comment box and we'll see you tomorrow night at 1230.
or on podcast at eh, 1.30 or so. Thanks for watching. Paul's take.